Welcome back to another iPad caricature tutorial. This time we're doing Procreate for iPad, $4.99 on iTunes. All the drawing today will be done with the hand stylus, which can be purchased online for $29.95. You can also get replacement nibs for, I believe, around eight bucks. You get six nibs. We're gonna be drawing Ron today, that handsome fellow with the glorious ginger goatee that you see there. Ron's a caricature artist out of Pittsburgh. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some basic controls with Procreate. If you look up here, we've got the brush panel, which if you open that up, it's got so many different amazing brushes. Uh, the 6B pencil is going to be the main thing I'm drawing with today, but uh, I also want to show you a little bit of the inks that are offered. And I got to say, uh, Procreate is super intuitive. The strokes are really smooth. Uh, they're practically flawless uh, until you get to the ink. Uh, the strokes you're going to see on here look really nice, but once you actually start applying them to a drawing, uh, they start to get a little funky as far as the line variations are concerned. So I'm going to be sticking with the pencil. As you can see here, this is the size slider, and then directly below it you have the opacity slider. They're located on the side in Procreate, where most uh, drawing apps are located on the bottom. So we've got the back button, but this the best thing about Procreate is you have gesture control. So if you put three fingers down on the screen and swipe to the left, whatever you drew will disappear. And quite the opposite happens when you swipe to the right with three fingers. So left, it goes away, right, it comes back. This right here is the layer panel. I'm going to show you another trick. This is the layer I've been doing my drawing on. With the gesture controls, if you put three fingers on the screen and you form a Z, it clears out the entire layer. And you can easily bring it back if you uh, had mistakenly done so. You can bring the layer right back by doing a Z formation in the opposite direction. So now I'm going to go into my 6B pencil and I'm going to go to my second to bottom most layer right there. And I'm going to kick my opacity down on my pencil quite a bit for my under sketch of Ron here. Uh, Ron has quite a, a unique face in the sense that there's a lot of blockiness involved, lots of amazing angles that you can take advantage of. Uh, there's a lot of exaggeration involved with uh, the lower region of his face. He's got um, you know, a pretty decent sized nose, but I think the real kicker for Ron is he's got this amazing uh, smile that uh, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, an underbite that flows directly into this massive uh, chin. So as you can see, I'm drawing that right now, getting the teeth in there, and I'm applying the teeth a little further uh, on the, the bottom of his jawline to emphasize that he's got a underbite. And what I'm doing right now is, uh, this is a cool little trick. If you go to the layer and tap on it, uh, all these prompts come up. One is opacity, and you swipe to the left, and it kicks the opacity down. You swipe to the right, it uh, knocks the opacity up. So that's a quick little trick there. You just tap the layer, and that's how you make that happen. So now I'm actually going to start applying my, um, my actual sketch. So I'm on the top layer. Got my 6B pencil uh, knocked all the way up to 100% opacity. And now I'm just going to lay down some lines to uh, start blocking everything in uh, and, and adding a little more detail. Now I don't know if you noticed that, but you can rotate your canvas in Procreate, which is another cool feature. Um, the canvas rotate can be really helpful when you're trying to uh, get a certain angle that you can't necessarily uh, achieve while it's just in regular landscape mode. So right now I'm just uh, blocking it in, all the detail. As you can see I am playing around with the, the line uh, size quite a bit, going up and down, up and down. Certain parts of the face uh, need broader and thicker lines. Some parts of the face don't so much. Uh, you know, mo many things that you want to add a dark line to are things that are coming into the foreground a little bit more than usual, like a nose, the outline of the head, the jawline, the mouth, top of the eye, uh, and then thinner lines are usually applied to, you know, small wrinkles, like uh, when people smile, or uh, eyebrows, teeth, uh, even uh, hair to a certain extent, depending on uh, if they're balding or not. In the case of Ron, dude owns it. Uh, you don't have to worry about any hair at all, at least on the top of his head. You'll see in a little bit, I'm going to get down to the goatee, and uh, there's going to be a lot of line work involved there, usually like a medium size line. Uh, the reason I enjoy the pencil more than the pen tool, the pen tool does give the appearance of a caricature marker, 
much like uh, with the other drawing apps. The only problem is the, um, the line is modulated based off of how quickly you lay down your line. And it's not very reliable. Yeah, I don't get the lines that I want to have. So I, uh, I, don't, I use the pencil instead. So there we go. We got our uh, outline of Ron. I'm going to show you guys a real cool trick for coloring lines now. Uh, I'm going to delete my sketch layer or just hide it. I'm going to go back into my main line work layer and I'm going to, uh, as you see there, I tapped on the layer again and I'm locking the transparency. What that does is any line that you've laid down by locking the transparency, and you can, you can tell it's locked by that little blue A there, by locking the transparency that means you can go in with any color in the color wheel and you can color in the line work that you've applied uh, with your, your main sketch. So as you can see here, I've got uh, the lines under his eye. I am just uh, grabbing a darker flesh tone, almost a, like a sepia brown, and I am coloring on top of those lines. Uh, it, it helps flesh out your drawing. It, uh, for me, you know, someone with a very graphic style that's heavily reliant on line work, I like to mix things up a bit and add some colored lines in, uh, usually on the lips, the eyes, wherever there's any type of fold in the skin, I will generally add in some uh, colored line work just to make it pop a little bit. Sometimes in the teeth as well, you know, depending on how gnarly the teeth are. But Ron's teeth are gnarly. He takes very good care of them. All right, so uh, I'm going to add a little green in there into the pupil, or I should say the iris. And now I'm going to uh, start laying in my, my color. And I'm going one layer below it with one of the brushes that are offered. Uh, this is an actual paintbrush. The opacity is at 100%. I'm laying in the skin tones. I'm basically, when, when you, whenever I add in my color, uh, it's always uh, the layer below. And I always block in uh, all the main colors. Like I want you to imagine it's like an old-fashioned comic book. You know, I'm talking about from the 80s where all it was was flat color. You want to just do that. So I'm, I'm getting in the skin tone, getting the blue in his shirt. I'm going to be getting in, you know, the color of his, uh, his teeth, his tongue, his lips, his eyes. Uh, but I'm not going to go overboard with it. I'm not going to start adding in uh, shading until after I block in all of the basic color. Okay, so think of it in the most simplest form possible. So uh, as I said before, this is just the regular paintbrush cool thing about the paintbrush is after a while you'll be able to um, modulate the opacity and get really cool blending. Um, with most apps I'm very gradient heavy with a lot of my coloring. With this there's not the option for gradients so I use the paintbrush quite a bit. And as you can see the lines I'm laying down right now for his goatee are very soft. I keep laying it on top of each other. I just basically keep laying paint on top of more paint just to keep it uh, smooth and soft. Uh, if you look closely on the top right next to the brush, there is a finger pointing down. That's the smudge tool. If you want to smooth out some of the paint strokes that you have put onto your drawing, just tap that finger and then just rub it across the area that you want to smooth out and it'll do a really good job smoothing out. Uh, Procreate initially was created more for uh, the painterly style. So a lot of the tools that are applied to Procreate are applied directly to people that like the paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock down that color layer and I'm going to go one layer above it. And just like with all the other drawing apps, I'm going to start laying in some of my shading with like a uh, almost like a light red. And then if I tap that layer, uh, I'm going to, um, actually I'm sorry, I'm going to tap the end in the layer and I'm going to select the multiply setting. Uh, with Procreate, you actually kind of have to work to find your filter settings or your layer settings. Uh, with Procreate, there's an N on the right of every layer. If you tap that, it'll have all of your uh, options like color, multiply, um, color burn, um, all those different options for, for when you're actually applying color. And uh, so you do have to work for it a little bit more. But as you can see, I'm just fleshing it out right now. Um, just going in with darker shades of red and um, just adding a little more depth to certain areas. And you know, once you get to the point on your color layer where you're happy with the shading, uh, if you need to do any tweaking, just go one more layer up 
and uh, go a little darker. I, I generally like to use multiple layers for my shading because I can always go back and if I'm eyeballing something that I don't think looks quite right, I'll just adjust the layer settings. I'll knock the opacity down a little bit. Uh, like if uh, my, my shading's too heavy, uh, if my shading's not heavy enough, I will uh, just keep adding on more and more. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding some, uh, looks like I'm going to be adding some uh, red into the tip of the nose, just to flesh it out a little bit more. A little bit more to the lips, around the eyes. The cheek, the ear, you know, that blood's flowing everywhere in that guy's face, so you want to add a little sprinkling of uh, red above him. The opacity's knocked down, I'd say, to about 15 to 20 percent, so it's not too overwhelming. And then once I get everything where I want it with the shading, you know, the last thing I generally will, will add in there is uh, the highlights, usually to the nose, the lip, in his case, uh, you know, his forehead as well. You know, the guy The guy obviously puts uh, turtle wax on that forehead, so you got to make sure it's got a nice little shine. Get that bling in there. So uh, with every, all the shading I'm doing right now, I'm using the same uh, brush. The same, uh, the, the strokes in these brushes are pretty amazing. You can experiment with different brushes, see what uh, is about the best fit for you. This one is just your standard paintbrush. So there we go. We got Ron. Uh, looks like I'm doing a few more touch-ups, and then bam, got to get that signature on there. So uh, I, I really appreciate you guys joining me for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys learned something and got a lot out of it. Uh, feel free to message me directly on YouTube if you have any other questions. Uh, and also, I do these commissions on my website. So feel free to visit my website, uh, nolanharrisart.com. I've got a store on there where you can order your own uh, digital iPad caricature. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.